have you this evening. We are so humbled to host you this Wednesday, Wednesday night. Uh, we are back again with our Bible study. Uh, we can never get enough of the Word of God. We can never get enough of God's love. We can never get enough of the guidance that is given to us through the Holy Spirit. So that's why we are always here. We make sure that we feed you with the Word of God. Just like you wake up in the morning and you want to have breakfast, you make, you make it a point that you have lunch, you have dinner, you have a snack, you have something to drink. It is the same way that your soul, your spirit needs the word of God. Every time that we come here and we talk about the goodness of God, we talk about the things that the promises of God, we talk about the things that God is capable of doing for you. We are feeding your soul. That is the food of the soul. Just like you buy the sandwich, just like you love that fried chicken, just like you love that meal that your grandma, that your mom, that your dad cooks for you. It is the same way that we have to be excited about the love of God, about the, uh, the Bible, about the teachings in the Bible, about the word of God. So never get enough, never get enough of the word of God because this is, this is the food of the spirit. Amen. So I just want to welcome you all. If you are watching us for the first time, this is Greater River Church and this is our place of healing, a place of restoration and a place of purpose. We believe in this church that God can heal you, God can restore your life, and God has got a purpose for you. There is a reason as to why you were born. There is a reason as to why you are watching us this evening. There is a reason for everything. God has got a reason for every single thing. And above all, the Bible says, I knew you before you were created in your mother's womb and i chose you to be a prophet there is an assignment that is written under your name there is a purpose there is a reason as to why you're on earth if somebody told you otherwise if somebody told you that you will never amount to anything you will never be anything in this world i just want to reverse that word and let you know that they lied to you you are something you are above and never beneath you are a blessed you every curse that was cast upon your life it god will change every single thing in your favor he will turn every curse into a blessing this is the greater river bible study and uh once again i just want to welcome you welcome you the pastor is coming to join us uh he's going to be taking us uh, through the word and i will be pinching in here and there but it's such a wonderful time to have you guys this evening. Thank you so much for watching. You can go down and comment. Let us know where you are watching from. I see my sister Debbie uh, from Virginia, from Maryland is already on. And uh, if you are out there and you're watching, I see some people online. If you're out there and you're watching, let us know where you're watching from and let us know what's going on. Yep, Amen. welcome pastor. Thank you, honey. Uh, right. It's a blessing once again to be back in the house of God. Amen. Amen. I'm so blessed and grateful to God for his faithfulness that has allowed us mm. once again to come. Because, you know, many times we think, because we do it many times, we might think, you know, this is something we're entitled to. Mm -hmm. But it is an opportunity, every opportunity we get to come here to open the word of God, to share it with the saints. Mm. We take it seriously. Yeah. We pray about it. We prepare because this is an assignment that brings life. Amen. Honey, did you know that uh, there's people, or as I speak right now, there is somebody out there, mm. in the words we're going to speak, yeah. they're probably being down, they're probably uh, wanting to take their life, they probably mm. wanted to give up on their dreams, they're yeah. you know, trying to give up on God, mm. but through the words we speak, you know, there is life that Amen. we share, and today we know that we are on assignment, God has brought us to you, Mm. Do not change the channel. Do not uh, scroll to anything else. Stay right here because Amen. God has a word, mm. a word that is going to change you, a word that is going to transform you. And uh, mm. uh, one of the things that I do know about God mm. and the presence of God, because sometimes we say these things, we are in the presence of God. Mm. But literally, when you are in the presence of God, uh, Jesus says that where two or three mm. are gathered in my name, mm. there will I be in their midst? So that means 
when we agree concerning God, we're here for, uh, for a special purpose, a sacred moment to meet with God. He is here. Mm. And what does that mean? Where God is, mm. where the Spirit of God is, mm. there is liberty. Amen. Where the Spirit of God is, there is growth. Yes. And the Bible says that He is the porter mm. and we are the clay. So that means anytime you come in the hands of God, anytime you come in contact with God, you have to best believe it that your life is going to change. Amen. Something is going to change about you. Mm. You know, just think about in the scriptures, mm. everywhere Jesus went, there was fireworks. Yeah. He was either healing the sick, mm. he was either raising up the dead, mm. he was either teaching them stuff they didn't know about or mm. stuff they, they were confused about. Mm. Jesus was always doing something. And the same today, Jesus is in this place today He's, he wants to heal you. Yeah. He wants to encourage you. He mm. wants to motivate you. He wants to take you to the, another level. So mm. all you have to do is to raise up your expectation. Mm. Raise up your expectation because yeah. your miracle, your mm. blessing mm. is right here. It's happening Amen. right now Amen. in the presence of the living God. Amen. How was your week? Ah, the week, ah, the week is going. I know. Very, yeah. very busy. Uh, mm. we, we had a good weekend. We came to church. Uh, it was mm. good to be back home. Uh, you know, after a, a brief time away and uh, just be able to communicate and connect with the saints mm. and uh, to, to be able to do what we love because we love doing this. Mm. We don't get paid to do it. Oh, yeah. But, you know, we do it because it is a calling God has given us and uh, we love to bring life. Mm. And the one thing about uh, this church, Greta River Church, uh, one of the scriptures we stand on is the scripture that says that out of your bellies, mm. rivers of living water, shall Shuffle. flow. Amen. So we believe we're at the greater river. Mm. So everything that comes out of this place is bringing, yes, yep. it's bringing life, mm -hmm. it's bringing hope, it's bringing healing, yeah. it's going to establish you Amen. in the faith and Amen. you're going to be steadfast. You won't be shaken anymore. Amen. Thank you so much for that. Amen. So what are we talking about today? Uh, so today we're going to be talking about the mind shift. Mm. And uh, for those of you, uh, you know, who tuned in on Sunday, mm. we shared about it in the Sunday sermon. But uh, uh, we're, gonna, we're just going to uh, dive a little deeper into it. You know, that's the cool thing about the Word of God. Mm. You know, uh, it's not just, you, you can go as deep as you want to go. And uh, this is one of the, uh, the messages that I thought, and also inspired by the Holy Spirit to go a little deeper. Mm. Because we are at a time that is so crucial. Yeah. We are in a time where uh, there is a lot of wealth. There is, uh, we are in a time where the people are falling away from the truth. We are in a time where there's a lot of, you know, there is fighting in Ukraine. Uh, there is uh, people dying. There is a lot of stuff going on, a lot of good and a lot of bad happening. Mm. So it is important for us as children of God to have our minds shifted in the right place. Mm. We need to understand that we have been called out by God from the world we read that on Sunday, God called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Mm. And he says to display or to share the, the virtues, the goodness of him who called us. So we mm. have to be very careful mm. not to misuse the time and the opportunity God has given us. Amen. Did you know that the apostles, can you imagine if the apostle Paul was around in this era with social media? In this era with aeroplanes, mm. with uh, rockets, with uh, cars, can you imagine the impact he would have had? Mm. So I believe those guys look down and they're like, I wish we were down there. I wish we were there to preach. I wish we were there to turn people's lives around. But mm. in order for us to have that kind of impact, mm. our minds have to be changed. And uh, we need to make a conscious decision to mm. say, you know what? I am making my mind up. I don't want to be the same person I was last year. Yeah. I don't want to be the same person I was two years ago. Mm. I don't want to be the same person I was last week. Mm. Because the mercies of God, they are new every morning. So that means mm. God is doing something new every single day. But your mind has to be ready mm. to change in order for you to grasp, in order for you to move in the blessing, mm. in order for you to be of impact. Mm. You know, when we started this year, yeah. the Lord gave us a word that this is the year of maximum of impact. Maximum impact. Mm. But how are you going to have maximum impact? Your mind 
It's going to start right here. Start right in the mind. Your mind has to be yeah. changed. Mm -hmm. You want to get wealthy? Your mm -hmm. mind has to change. Yeah. You know, you want to you wanna buy a house? You want to mm -hmm. start a family? Not just starting a family. You want to have a good marriage? Mm -hmm. You have to change your, your mind. mindset, yeah. That's what I tell people mm -hmm. uh, in counseling. You got to change your mind. What do you want? Mm -hmm. Do you want a normal marriage mm -hmm. where things, you know, you don't talk, you, you're fighting, or, you know, everybody's doing their own thing? Or do you want a healthy spiritual marriage you know what kind of life do you want to live mm. do you want to live a life of struggle every single day every year in order for that to change you need to change your mind mm. and do things differently so that's what we're going to talk about today yeah yeah so uh speaking about uh changing the mind i remember when i had just come to this country i uh I, I remember I didn't like change my WhatsApp number. It still showed the Ugandan number, mm. and I was still. I used to communicate to almost everybody, ev yeah. even the people that I'm not even supposed to be talking to, because mm. it's also very good to know the season that you're in. Yes. That in this season, which people am I going with in yes. this season? So this country that I'm in, mm. which people am I talking to? The people that I'm talking to. Are they telling me something that is going to help me become prosperous in this country? Yeah. Are they going to connect me to a job? Are they going to tell me something new that I didn't have, mm. that, that, I, that I didn't know? Mm. So I made a decision. I remember I, ch I, I made a decision. I was like, I'm going to change my number. I'm going to cut off all this baggage that I have. Because mm. I had all these people from back home uh, wow. for the immigrants out there. You know how, you know, how our people are. They need money, they have needs, they have yeah. A, B, C, D, F, G. But I didn't see myself progress in this country yeah. until I changed my mind. Mm. I was like, you know what? Now in, the se in this season that I'm in, yeah. I, need peop I need Americans. Yes. I need to get American friends because I'm in America. Yes. I need American friends. I need American connections. Mm. The people that I used to talk to, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, in Uganda, was I used to work on TV and all that stuff. Yeah. People used to tell me things, th the life that I had left behind. Mm. They would tell me, they oh, when, when they were taking me back. Oh, when are you coming back? Oh, we got a replacement for the show. Mm. We, you know, like stuff. They were telling me stuff. I, I was living in America, mm. but you were still every, back in Uganda. I was still back in Uganda, mm. but until I changed my mind. And I was like, what is this life that I'm living? Because mm. even I, I, I even had it in my head that I'm going to go back home. I'm going to go back to Africa. You understand? Yeah. But until I changed my mind, mm. I did not see a blessing in this country. But the moment I changed my mind and I said, now, America, this is home. Mm. This is it. This is it. Yes. This is home. I'm going to be in this country. I'm going to prosper. Yes. I'm going to meet my husband over here. Yes. I'm going to have my kids over here. Yes. Until I changed my mind, mm. nothing was moving for me. Because wow. I had hesitations mm. about every single thing that I was making. Yeah. Every move that I wanted to make, I couldn't make friends. Because at the end of the day, I was like, I have friends back home. Yeah. And these are going to be my friends. At the end of the day, I'm going to go back. Mm. But until I changed my mind, you came along. Mm. My children came along. Wow. So, so many things started to change when I changed my mindset. Mm. I got Amer American friends. Mm. I got spiritual uh, 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 sons and daughters. You understand? Yeah. So, it all starts in the mind, just like you just said, that until you change your mind, if you t put it in your head that I need a million dollars, mm. it has to start in, in the, the mind. mind. Yep. After, after, st after having a thought mm. registers in the mind, yeah. you will now go down and you're like, what are the steps? Mm. What steps am I going to take to get a million dollars? Yeah. But it all starts in the mind. True. That's very true. And we read, we read a scripture on Sunday mm. uh, in the book of Proverbs where it says that as a man thinketh, mm -hmm. so he is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the mind is so powerful. Mm. You know, the, I can quote so many uh, sayings about the mind. It's a, a mind is a beautiful thing. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. So, uh, and one of the things why I was so blessed mm -hmm. and why, uh, you know, I really want to emphasize more about the mind is that many of us, we have potential. All of us have potential in us. All we yeah. have 
a seed of greatness inside of us, mm. especially when you, you know, you are in God. And, uh, but some people or some of us, we don't live to the full potential mm. just because we haven't used our mind well. Right. We haven't used our mind well. Mm. And so it's important, especially as children of God, because God has told us that we are the top mm. and not the bottom. Yeah. We are the heads and not the tails. Mm. But how are we going to, you know, live? Because it's one thing to say, recite these scriptures, but it's another thing to be so, it. Yeah. To reflect upon your life. Now, mm. I have seen people, and even in my personal life, there are things that have changed in my life the moment I started speaking the word of God, when I changed my mind and I spoke what God says about me. Yeah. But like you said, it is very easy to be a Christian, mm -hmm. but still live a life of failure, mm -hmm. live a life of defeat. Yes. When you refuse, when you refuse to change your mind because you, you want to be in God, but yet you still want to, a part of you to be in the world. Mm. And that, you know, you cannot serve two masters. Mm. Actually, we're going to read a scripture for you here in the book of James, uh, where, uh, where it says that a double-minded person, let's just go there real quick. Uh, so James chapter 1, mm. verse seven, 5 to 7. Uh, do you just want to read this, honey? Now, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to him. Mm -hmm. But he who asks in faith without doubting, mm -hmm. because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. Mm. That man should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Do you see this? Yeah. So this is so powerful. This is a powerful teaching from the book of James. Mm. James chapter 1, uh, verse 5 to 7. He says that uh, if you lack wisdom, mm. you should ask from God who gives generously yeah. to all without finding fault. So in other words, you, you are foolish without wisdom. Mm. You know, there are things you don't know until you make up your mind. So you see, you have to make up your mind. You have to understand. You know what? I don't know it all. Mm. I don't have all the answers. Mm. I've done everything in the world. I've been with people. I've uh, traveled. I've done this. But life is not, is not connecting. I feel like something is missing. God is telling us in his word, if you lack that kind of wisdom, you have to ask God who gives generously. But until you ask God, until you make up your mind to ask God, you're going to stay foolish. Mm. Because you don't have wisdom. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, the Bible goes on to say that uh, when you go, when you ask God, you must ask in faith without doubting because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. Now, mm. how does doubt come? You have doubt because you've been dealing with people who have disappointed you. Mm. You're dealing with people who promised to do stuff for you and they didn't do it. Now, you're bringing the same culture into God mm. because God is not a liar. Yeah. He says he's not a son of man to lie or regret. Everything he says, he's going to fulfill. So when you come to God, you need to cast all the doubt mm. at the door when you come into the kingdom of God and come in faith knowing that my God is going to do what he says he's going to do. God says, I am blessed. Mm. God says, he loves me. So don't, mm. don't come to God and then, you know, still, oh, is he going to change his mind about me? Mm. Maybe he's going to destroy me. Maybe he's going to punish me for what I did in the past. When you come to God, you have to make up your mind that God is a blesser. Mm. God is a healer. God is a restorer. Mm. God is an encourager. God mm. is a father to the fatherless. So when you come to him, Come in faith. And the scripture goes on to say in verse number seven that when you have doubt, mm. you are like a wave in the sea. You are blown and tossed by the wind. Many people have not received everything they need to receive from God because there is a lot of wind in their ears. Mm. People telling them, oh, you won't be the very first one to believe God. Mm. How come somebody believed in God and this and this didn't happen for them? Mm. How come, you know, how do you know it's going to work for you? Yeah. You know, look at all the stuff you've done in your life. Mm. You are terrible. You're so dirty. Look at your past. Mm. And that's what people do. 
they pull up your past. Mm. But thank God, they only have access to your past. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Guess and what? Not, and not your future. Not your future. <laughs> yeah. They only have access to your, to your past. Thank mm. God. But yeah. God not only looks at your past and forgives it, but he's preparing you for success, mm. for better, for yes. bigger in the present yes. and in the future. Yeah. That's why he says that I have a good plan for you, a plan to give you a hope and a future. Isn't yeah. God so good? Yes, he is. Man, that's the kind of God we have. So today as we share this word, we want you to know mm. that when you change your mind, when you make a decision to change your mind, your life is going to change as well. Amen. Amen. It's going to change as well. Yeah. So uh, let's go into another verse. Let's do <coughs> Romans chapter 12, verse number 2. Yeah, so Romans chapter 12, verse number 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hmm. Then you will be able to test and approve what is the good, what is, what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Amen. Thank you, honey. Amen. So let's just start with verse number two. It says, do not be confirmed mm. to this world. Don't be confirmed to this world. You know, in other words, do not associate, do not, uh, I'm, I'm trying to find the, the, the best description of the word confirm. Do not, uh, like do not subject. A, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. Do not be a slave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good word too. Yeah, do not, do not be confirmed. Do not... Uh, be tied up. Yes. Tied up. Do not lock yourself up mm. to, the, to the pattern of this world. Mm. Do not be... Say, do not be. Mm. Maybe you've been doing things, you know, a certain way. God is saying today, do not be confirmed, mm. but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, what you see here, what God is saying is that, this is your responsibility. Mm. God is not going to renew your mind, mm. but you have to make a decision. He says, do not be confirmed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of what? Of, of your, your mind. mind. Mm. I, uh, Pastor, I got the definition of confirm. Yes. Oh, it says it very well. So it says uh, the definition is confirm with rules, mm -hmm. standards, mm -hmm. or laws. Mm. And then the other one says, uh, behave according to socially acceptable conversions or standards. I love that. Yeah. I love that. So do not, do not allow yourself, mm. just because, like I said on Sunday, many times, many of us who come from Africa or from Uganda, from Haiti, from Jamaica, especially immigrants, mm. when we come here, we settle, we find people mm. who have been here 10 years. They've been here five years, mm. and some of them have failed. Some of them have only seen failure. And the first thing that comes out of, out of their mouth is that America is terrible. Yeah. Um, America is terrible. Maybe mm. they haven't been able to get their citizenship or uh, a green card or whatever, and they've been treated bad because there's bad all over the world. Mm. But you find these people who have been, who are, <laughs> who are career failures, they have failed in their life. Mm. And the moment you come, the first thing they do is they just pour all the failure over you. They will tell you all the bad stuff that didn't work for them. Mm. But guess what? You are different. Mm. You are a child of God. Yes. You, you are unique. Mm. When you look at your fingers, your fingers are unique. It doesn't matter if that person telling you you came from the same womb. Mm. You're not the same person. Yeah. So what we're saying today, do not let what you see around you dictate mm. who you are mm. because you are special. Mm -hmm. God has a different journey, yeah. different from the people that you are in. So that, that's why we said on Sunday, just because the people around you, you found them driving this kind of car, you find them living in this particular neighborhood. Well, when you come, all the Ugandans stay in this city. Mm. It's okay to, you know, network when you're getting started, you know, you know, try to see how things work in the area. Mm. But you have to make up your mind and say, you know what? This is why I came to this country. Mm. This is what I came to achieve. Mm. And whatever it takes, I'm going to do it and I'm going to be a success. I don't care who has failed. I don't care who has not made it in this field. 
I am going to make it. Mm. I'm going to make it. Amen. You yes. make up your mind. Mm. So that's why the Bible has told us, do not be confirmed mm. to the pattern of this world, yeah. how people do things in your world, mm. but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm. And how do you renew your mind? You renew your mind with the word of God. Mm. The word of God is going to help you. To, you know, to, to have your mind renewed because the word of God is going to tell you what God says about you. Amen. Amen. That is why we're here today, not to waste time or just to look cute on the camera. Mm. We just came here to renew your mind with the word of God. Because mm. when, you, when you're failing, honey, mm. when you, life is hard and you feel like giving up, the word of God is going to tell you, you are the head and not the tail. Yeah. The righteous person falls seven times, mm. but every time he falls, he gets up. Mm. Your mind is renewed. Oh, yeah. You shall be a blessing in the city and in the country. Mm. Your mind is renewed. Amen. I'm the Lord that healeth thee. Mm. You know, by, by, your, by his stripes you were healed. Mm. That renews your mind. Weeping may Renew. endure yes. for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. When, when you hear that word in the middle of the night or in the day, and mm. life is not making sense, your mind is going to be renewed. Your spirit Amen. is going to be strengthened. And you're going to grab onto the word of God and say, devil, shut up. I am a blessing. Amen. I am the child of yes. God. The Bible told us in 1 Peter mm. chapter 2, verse number 9, it says that, but you are a holy nation. Mm. You are a royal priesthood. Amen. A royal priesthood is somebody from the royal family. Mm. We are in the family of God the family of the king. So that means we are not going to lose. Mm. And no weapon that is forged against us Amen. is going to prosper. Yes. And every tongue mm. that rises up against us in judgment, we're Amen. going to condemn it as well. Amen. 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 That is the heritage of the children of God. Amen. Amen. Renewing your mind. Mm. That is how powerful it is. And now listen, the next part. It says, after you've renewed your mind, it says, mm. then you will be able to test mm. and approve what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Amen. You see how powerful the word of God is? So that means if your mind is not renewed, mm. you're going to listen to whatever they tell you. You're going to be like what Jim said. You're going to be tossed, blown and tossed by the wind. Yes. Whatever teaching comes, Whatever message comes, it's going to get you off course. Mm. But when your mind is renewed, mm. you're going to be able to test mm. and approve what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Now, Amen. let's go deep just a little bit here. Did you know that there is people, and I talk about this all the time, men and women of God, I pray one day I have a chance to ask them, who told us that some of us, are supposed to be poor in our life. There's a man of God who told me in the face, mm. some people are supposed to be that way. Not everybody is supposed to be rich. Now, that might be true in the world, but here in the kingdom of God, when you make up your mind, when you understand the word of God and his promises for you, mm. you are going to walk in prosperity. You're going mm. to, to move, you're going to create wealth. Mm. Because the word of God is going to tell you how to do it. We have certain things that we do that allow us, mm. that lead us into that path. Amen? Amen? So when you are renewed in your mind, you're going to be able to test and approve. Because these, some of these prophets, they will tell you, for you, you are cursed. Mm. For you, you're paying for the sins of uh, your great-grandfathers. And then I've seen Christians, honey, Christians that I know, who have given up and all they're waiting for is for Jesus to appear in the clouds mm. or to die and meet That's Jesus. Sad. And sad. they live a life of misery, mm. a life of lack. They speak in tongues. They know the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. They, they can prophesy, but they're living a life that is not worth of a royal priesthood. Mm. God has called us to serve him. Sad. God has called us to be kings and queens. It's in the Bible. Mm. It's not our words. So yeah. in order for us to live that life, we need to have our mind changed. And now the thing is that it doesn't happen only when you say, dear Lord, I invite you in my life. That is the first step. 
Mm. But every single day, you have to make up your mind. That is why, you know, you don't stay in bed. You can s decide, I'm so mad. I broke up, you know, with my boyfriend, with uh, my spouse. I'm going to stay in bed. But you don't stay in bed. Mm. You make up your mind. You know what? Let bygones be bygones. Mm. I'm going to get up. I'm going to put my makeup on. I'm going to dress nice. I'm going to go in the world. I'm going to show up. I'm going to show out. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So changing your mind, renewing your mind is going to lead you to a life of victory, a life of purpose. Amen. 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 The perfect, the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. And uh, let me just go there just a little bit. I just want to emphasize this because many of us, like I said, we even doubt. I was talking to somebody today and they were like, you know, sometimes I doubt this thing about God. Why, mm. why do, you know, bad things happen to good people? Mm. Why do people who are important, people who are uh, of value, they're the ones who die. They're the ones who pass away, but all these... Uh, Excuse me, honey. Okay. But all these people who, you know, who uh, kill people, uh, people who... Uh, uh, honey, if you don't mind, take off your uh, turn off your microphone. Amen. Uh, so these people who are, you know, who are bombing buildings, destroying cities, they're the ones who leave. Now, that is for God <laughs> to explain to us. That is for God to, you know, one day we will know why certain things happen the way they happen. But let me tell you something. The plan of God is good. The will of God is good. It is pleasing and it is perfect. Amen. That is the will of God. God has a perfect plan for you. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to live a life of meaning. So if you've been struggling for a little bit, if you've been going through stuff, maybe for uh, as long as you know, you've been struggling, you've been you know, fighting through life. Let me tell you, the moment you make up your mind to believe what God says about you, the moment you make up your mind to follow after God, you are going to live a life that you're supposed to live. You're not going to live, uh, you know, uh, what you were supposed to do here and then go to heaven and you cry. There's some, a preacher said that some people are going to cry in heaven because they're going to look at the stuff that belonged to them. They didn't possess it. They're going to look at the books they were supposed to read, uh, to write. They didn't uh, write them. They're going to look at the accomplishments they were supposed to get to, and they didn't do it. So God forbid, we are determined here at the Greater River Church to lead you, to open up your eyes, to open up your mind, so that you are able to move in the full will, in the full perfect will of God, which is to see you are successful, which is to see you prosper, which is to see you overcome and be on top in every aspect of your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we're talking about renewing or changing our minds, talking about a mind shift. If you believe it, I want you to say amen. Amen. And I says, uh, Sister Linda, thank you so much for watching. Amen. God bless you. Amen. So let's read the last verse of the day. It's coming out of Proverbs Proverbs chapter 13, verse 18. Proverbs 13, 18 to 21. It says, Poverty and shame come to him who ignores discipline. But whoever heeds correction is honored. It says, Desire fulfilled is sweet to the soul, but turning from evil is detestable to fools. Uh, let me read, and then I'm going to come back. Verse 20 says, He who walks with the wise will become wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. Disaster pursues sinners, but prosperity is the reward of the righteous. Now, I want you to take your time and read Proverbs 13, verse 18 to 21. But I, I want to highlight verse number 18 that says, Poverty and shame come to him who ignores discipline, but whoever heeds correction is honored. So this still goes to show you the power of changing your mind, 
the power of shifting your mind. So uh, the Bible is telling us you're going to live a life of poverty and shame when you decide, when you make up your mind to ignore discipline. To ignore what, what you are taught in class, what you are taught by your parents, what you are taught by uh, mistakes. Because sometimes the biggest or the best teacher is experience. We all know that. So when you ignore a discipline in whichever form that it comes, you are going to live a life of poverty and shame. But listen, but whoever heeds to correction is honored. Still, that is a decision. You make up your mind. You know what? I've messed up. I've done, uh, made some mistakes. I've uh, you know, uh, done this and that. That hasn't brought me any, any results. Now, I am making up my mind. I'm going to be corrected. I'm going to let people correct me. I'm going to talk to counselors. I'm going to talk to consultants. I'm going to talk to the pastor. I'm going to talk to uh, leadership, my boss, my manager. And the moment you heed to correction, you are going to be honored. You're going to leave that place of, uh, you know, of failure. You're going to leave that place of misery. You're going to leave that place of lack. You're going to get into a place of honor because you have made up your mind to embrace discipline. Now, uh, let's, uh, let's go to verse number 19. I love the last part that says, But turning from evil is detestable, to fools. Turning from evil is detestable to fools. So in other words, fools, they don't want to change their ways. They don't want to change their mind. You know, uh, we always watch, uh, we have a show we, we like to watch with my wife. And uh, usually uh, we have these people, you know, who are drug dealers, who are scammers, and, uh, you know, people who take stuff from people. And uh, I just ask my wife all the time. Now, these people really, okay, if you got into this a drug business because you are poor or you are scamming people because you wanted to get some money. After you get that million dollars, what are you still doing in, in the uh, stealing, doing drugs and all that? But because they're foolish, the Bible says, turning from evil is detestable. It is not acceptable to them. They don't want to hear it. It's detestable to fools. So they stay in the same pattern and they don't stop until they are caught. And guess what? Their end is not pleasant. They never recover. They die in jail. Some of them, they are, you know, they're executed. Some of them die in prisons. So as we finish today, brothers and sisters, it is so important for you and I to make it a conscious, conscious decision to have our mind renewed, renewed by the word of God. And when we come to God, let us believe that the path he's taken us, David says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me in green pastures. God is not going to lead you in a, uh, into a path of destruction. He is only going to lead you into a path of good, into a path of greatness, into a path of healing, into a path of wellness, into a path of steadfastness. That is is the will of God for you. But how are you going to live it? How are you going to uh, move into that experience? By allowing yourself, making up your mind, have a mind shift, change your mind. And when you change your mind to what God says about you, it doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what people gossip about you. It doesn't matter how much they put you down. At the bottom, <laughs> or, or, at the bottom of it all, you're going to say, I know who I am. I am a blessing. I am a child of God. I am a winner. I am destined to win. I am here for purpose. I'm an overcomer. No weapon forged against me shall prosper. Greater is he in me than the one in the world. So that's the mentality. So as we finish today, I want you to make up your mind to be what God wants you to be. And when you make up your mind, you're going to be unstoppable. You are going to do great things in this country, in America. You're going to do great things in Asia, in the Middle East, in uh, Europe, wherever God has plant planted you, even in Africa. You are going to do great and mighty things because you have allowed, you have made up your mind to do and be what God 
calls you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're going to pray, and then we're going to finish our Bible study. I hope you are blessed today. If this word blessed you, please go ahead and share it with somebody else. Let somebody be blessed because this is a good teaching, and I believe it's going to help you if you put it into our practice every morning. Wake up and make up your mind. Say, I am going to win. I'm not going to dwell on the past. I am forgiven. I am loved. I am chosen. I am peculiar to God. Therefore, I'm going to live my best life. Amen. All right, before we leave, I just want to give you an opportunity once again to give into the house of God. This work that we do, it requires money to continue moving. We all know that nothing is free. But let me tell you, when you make up your mind to support the word of God, you are going to tap into a resource. You're going to tap into a reservoir that is filled with blessings. God is a blesser. God is a provider of our needs. So today I want to challenge you if you've never done it before. Today I want you to make up your mind. I want you to sow a seed into this ministry. And when you do, you're going to help us to continue sharing this, this good news. You're going to help us to continue loving on people, encouraging them, giving them hope, and that opening people's eyes to what God calls them. Amen? So uh, there is a lot of ways to give. The information is right on the screen right now. Go ahead and give, and the Lord is going to bless you in a very, very, very special way. You can give via Cash App. You can give via PayPal. You can give uh, via, uh, you can give via uh, Venmo. Uh, you can give via a check. You can send it to the church. All the information is on the screen. Please go ahead and grab, grab on it, and I'm going to pray. Father, we thank you so much for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the blessing you've given us. Father, I pray that this word, will indeed take root. This word will bless somebody. This word will take somebody to another level. God, may you break all the barriers. May you break all the chains. May you, Lord, allow your word of God to enter. Lord, I pray that your people will make up their minds, first of all, to receive what you want for them. And Lord, as they open up their minds, oh God, that your spirit will flow through them. Lord, minister unto them and lead them to a life of purpose, to a life of restoration, to a purpose, to a life of increase, to a life of abundance, because that is your will, that is your plan, that is your purpose for us. So Lord, we seal it, we establish it upon all these your people. In the name of Jesus, we declare a blessing, we speak healing, we speak provision, we speak open doors, we speak, oh God, breakthrough to happen to them right now, healing in their bodies, healing in their minds. And for those who are hurting right now, those who are crying over a loss of a loved one, those who are going through terrible times, Father, we pray that you will comfort them, you will strengthen them in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. We love you. Let us meet here on Friday, 7 p.m. for the Breakthrough Power Night. It's going to be great. Time of prayer. Don't miss. And then Sunday, 10.30 a.m., come early. We're going to have Sunday school and the worship experience. It's going to be great. Don't you dare miss. We love you. This is the Greater River Church, a place of healing, a place of restoration, a place of purpose. God bless you.